With this, we begin the calibration procedure of the 2235 oscilloscope. I was able to wash the screen in the sink as it was removed, let it air dry, and now it can be put back on the scope. The bag I have actually includes the original Tektronix calibration screwdrivers for this procedure. Tektronix really did a good job in documenting all of this. They really know what they're doing. Uh, this should be fairly painless. There are a lot of steps. There are things that I do not have to do this, things that I, I don't have a laboratory. I'm going to do the best that I can for an oscilloscope that hasn't been calibrated since like 1983. And I'm sure I'll get through it just fine. They talk about the initial control settings. Um, we're going to set up the oscilloscope just like this. And the first step they talk about is the DC uh, power level and adjustment. In, in a previous video, I had done this as part of the initial troubleshooting procedure. And there is a, um, a level right here. And these were already done as part of a separate event and found to be okay. So I'm going to skip this one because this has already been done. I've gotten everything to the initial control settings. Notice that it starts off horizontal in XY mode, which would also bring with the uh, coupling to ground, nothing more than a dot right here. So this is how they want it set up, and that's how I've gotten it set up. And we're going to move on from there. For step one, I actually have the Tektronix Terminator for the task. Uh, connecting the 50 ohm terminator to the Z axis input in the back, uh, adjusting the front panel focus, rotate the A intensity, adjust the grid bias variable resistor as indicated here, um, disconnect, and complete. So A to E. So when I add the 50 ohm uh, resistor in the back, the dot did get brighter, right? But then it says to adjust the front panel focus, um, which I'm going to do right now, and just to get the dot in the best possible position. I think that's good right there. And then it says to um, adjust the A intensity control fully counterclockwise, and that would shut it off, right? So fully counterclockwise it is, right? Adjust the grid bias for a visible dot, then back off the grid bias potentiometer until the dot just disappears. So that's what I'm gonna to have to do the next. It looks like that grid bias is way down there. So I'm gonna to have to get the screwdriver down there and adjust that. Adjust the grid bias for a visible dot and then back off the grid bias until the dot just disappears, which I have done. And that concludes that step right there. A lot of the stuff that's going to be conducted, just like in other videos I do with oscilloscopes, is at uh, 5 millivolts per division. And you talk about uh, four divisions and on the field tech, there's just no way to go that low without it distorting the waveform. It's, ju it's just too low of a voltage. So what I do is I make my uh, custom attenuator that I throw in line depending on the resistor that I need. And that way I'm able to drive the field tech a lot higher to produce a nicer waveform. Uh, so the voltages on the field type will never line up to what's on the oscilloscope, but it does the job. For stuff that I need to calibrate, however, when I need to calibrate voltages, I use my uh, custom setup, set it up on the field tack, and then get the actual voltage on the hand tack, and that becomes the reference standard, and then I could transpose it to the oscilloscope I'm working on. So I wanted to point that out once in this video about what I do for super low voltages. This step focuses on the adjustment of the astigmatism. It talks about these particular settings that should be set up on the oscilloscope in order to accomplish this task. And it talks about what type of termination should be used. I've discussed previously how this was handled. Uh, 50 kilohertz uh, signal should set up a four division display. And I've been able to accomplish that with the configurations that I've set up on 0.3 volts, as I've described, right? And it talks about adjusting the A-STIG and the front panel focus for the best defined waveform and then disconnect the test equipment, right? So what I have right now is four divisions uh, taken up based on the settings and the input that I've provided. And I've already played with the focus a little bit, the knob up front, and now I'm going to go back in the A-STIG and play with that and come back and forth between that and focus till I got the best possible picture. Hard to see on the video, but as I turn the A-STIG, there is a, a point where it becomes really sharp. That's about right there. And that's where I'm going to lock it down and call that step completed. Even easier to demonstrate that if you've turned on the bandwidth limiter, it's a lot, a lot easier to see if you've got an A-stick exactly where you want it. So just to prove the point, 
There it is right there. It's like pencil sharp. So next one is trace alignment, and this one's real easy. Uh, using the existing sine wave, uh, we just want to make sure that it's not crooked, and I'll make it crooked so you can see. There you go. There's crooked, and there's crooked that way. And basically, we just want it to be level. So if I could get the, the center point on the center graticule, then all three of them should line up. And the trace rotation is on front, so it's really easy to get to. And this is something that I could always go back later and do. You don't need to open the unit. So this one is easy and it's done and we're moving on. Sadly for step six, I, I don't have a time mark generator. I cannot do step six. So I'm gonna have to leave that one alone. There are some steps I can't do. I don't have all the equipment. And step six is pretty busy, but again, there is nothing I can do about it. So step seven is checking the scale illumination, rotate scale illumination control and see if it works. I mean, that's pretty much it. Well, since we're doing as much as we can, here we go. This is off. And there's all the way on. Back to off, it seems good to me. That step is completed. And with this, we find ourselves in the vertical section. The vertical section has a new uh, set of initial control settings that I now have to perform on the oscilloscope. They are shown here. Having set up everything, I'm gonna explain this first step. Uh, basically, there's gonna be a, a, a line that looks um, almost like everything's just set to uh, um, Ground, even though it's coupled to AC, why I do not know. I'm going to shut off the camera light when I when I display how this is going to happen. And basically, if if I have this set up, the line actually sits down there because it's not actually calibrated yet. But the point is, having known that, or they assume that it's not calibrated, what they would like you to do is to turn the position knob to bring it up to the center graticule, right, on 50 millivolts, right. And the thing is, is having been set up on 50 millivolts, if I turn it to 20 or 5 or whatever, and they just assume going all the way out to 5, that it should still sit in the same position. There should be no reason why that should deflect. But if, as I turn it, you can see it's it's moving. I just go to 5, and, and it's down there. So the point of this exercise here is to make some adjustments so that this deflection doesn't happen. And that's what we're going to do. The resistor that we're going to adjust for this is R10, it's labeled right here, Step Attenuator Balance. I moved it to 5 and now obviously it's uh, deflected. And now I'm going to turn this attenuator right here. And I bring it back to position or roundabout. It's hard to see with the camera going, but I'll take a look when I, when I stop it. But that brings it back into position. So if I go now from 5, I should be able to go to 50. And we see no no deflection. 50, 5. And that was the point of this. As we can see in the book, it says to repeat A through D until there is no trace shift when changing channel 1 from 50 to 5. And then do the same thing for channel 2. Uh, channel 2 uses R60, which is located over here. So, well, right over here. So, really easy. With that, I was able to knock out channel 2 as well. We could see 5, 50, 5. So channel 2 is done just like channel 1. That completes that step. Next step is extremely similar. It's a relationship between 5 millivolts and 2 millivolts. I will show um, here on channel 2. Since I'm on it, we can see 5 millivolts, and then I drop to 2, and it's miscalibrated. This is a, a separate circuit with a separate pot to adjust this. And this, for this circuit, is um, R83. So we're going to adjust R83 to make that not deviate when that adjustment is made. R83 is actually hidden under the ground strap, which had to be removed for this portion. Also, if you're going to calibrate these, I always take the opportunity to use them to clean the wipers. I mean, this one was really dirty, and now it's not, because I've already gone back and forth like 20 times. But these pots haven't been moved in forever, and this one was scratchy and just nasty. I'm gonna the next one I'm gonna try and capture the first movement of it so we can see what it what it looked like. But this one I'm just gonna move into its final position now and, and do that test between two and five. Now I've got two and five locked down. Uh two looks uh a lot noisier, but it's still centered, and the goal of this is centering it. It's not that it's wider. So that one's good, that's done. And this is repeated for channel one, same procedure using resistor 33 to accomplish this task. I got the same test set up now for channel one. 
Uh, a lot of these pots were at least slightly tweaked as part of the initial troubleshooting event. I hope to capture this. Uh, first, I'll show the discrepancy. This is five millivolts to two, so there is a difference. So five is at the center graticules. I'm gonna bring it to two, and I'm gonna slowly turn this pot, and, and I'm gonna see if I could capture this on... Of course, this one's not dirty, because that would have been helpful. But it is what it is. Not all of them are dirty. I'm still going to clean this pot because I have the opportunity to. So I'm, I don't have the, the light on on the camera so we can look at the oscilloscope. I'm just going back and forth on this thing. Cleaning the wipers. I've got it set up. Here's five and here's two. I'm pretty much on the money. Again, one is wider than the other. So this one is done. This procedure is finished. This basically makes the entire sweep linear from two all the way up to five. I know the two is a bit thicker again, but it's still in the middle. So the next one is done at the 10 millivolt setting and it has to do with the um, uncalibration or the variable calibration knob. And basically it, it talks about uh, taking it out of calibration and turning it all the way uh, counterclockwise and then centering the, um, the oscilloscope here, basically going like this turning it all the way out of cal, right? And then centering the oscilloscope on the center graticule. And what they want is, is that once it's centered and all the way out of cal as such, to turn it back until it's back in calibration, as seen here in the indicator light. And there should be no deflection, apparently, as I'm reading it. Uh, so there's an adjustment to be made to stop this deflection from happening. It says here, that the uh, deflection is controlled by R25. So uh, this should be repeated until there's no more uh, shift in the trace. And R25 is right down here called var -bal, variable balance. And that's the one we're gonna work with next. What I'm gonna try and do is bring this back to center. That's good for close enough for now. And basically, as I turn it, it a bit too far, right? So if I were to bring this to center position and bring it back, we could see that there would still be some, some movement. Just a little bit of, a little bit of movement there. So I would repeat this procedure again. I'm going and using the position portion to bring it back to center. Dropping it again, making the correction until I get it. Now we can see the calibration is off. I can turn the calibration all the way uh, counterclockwise. There's no deflection. Turn it back off. Everything is just fine. This channel is complete. I'll move over to channel two. I correct myself. Channel two does not have the same procedure. Channel two is a different procedure called invert balance. So we'll be moving over to this step now. This is going to be difficult to pull off for channel two because the invert knob is the position knob and basically what they want you to do is position the center right just like that and they want to see if it changes when you pull invert right the problem is it's difficult not to move the center you see it just moved when you pull this knob because it's, it's very squirrely you touch it and it moves so it's hard to know if if it was a result of, see, sometimes you could get it, but it's very, very hard to do. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this one off very well. So I don't know, maybe if I should put a signal through it to see, I'm not sure. To hold it in quick su succession like this and do the adjustment, I think that you could find, you could set it up like back and forth and then you calibrate it as you do that. But if you do it slowly and take your hand off it, then you'll never know if it was in the right position. Great one right down here, R75, the inv bal, inverter balance right here. It was too difficult to do on camera, uh, but if I show, if I could pull it now back and forth, I got it. And, and this is my hand moving it, but you can see that I generally have it on the money now. So I'm going to call this one done. This was difficult to do, but now it's balanced, so I'm going to leave it alone. And note here that subsequent steps talk about the same procedure as in channel one, which is to take the uh, channel two out of calibration that the uh, LED is illuminated and then rotate it all the way clockwise 
uh, um, counterclockwise and then um, back clockwise again and look for the deflection. It then talks about repeating step two and step four, uh, specifically for channel two, channel one being just fine, channel two until no further improvement is noted. And I'll tell you that um, in doing that specific procedure, there is a little bit of deflection when, when going all the way. It's not, not so terrible, you know, for what it is. But there is no variable balance pot for channel two, nor does it specify the adjustment of any. It just says until there's no further improvement, which I find rather odd. But this is what the book says, like, get it as good as you can get it. And that's that's it. So if anybody has any thoughts on that very specific thing, I'd like to hear about it. But I have also checked um, the diagram for this. And there is a, a variable balance for channel one. There is no variable balance for channel two. So I don't know what to tell you.